Thank you very much. First, uh, first of all, I'm very happy to be here. And uh, thank you very much for your welcome and uh, your kindness. And a uh, special thank you to Mustafa. Uh, as you can hear it, I'm French, so I don't speak very well, uh, very well English. It doesn't mean that every French people doesn't speak well French, but uh, well English, but I don't speak well English. So, and uh, doing such talks, it uh, means to improve my English. Well, uh, as uh, Mustafa said it, I'm both professor, full professor at the University of Sawa. It's a very, very beautiful place uh, in, in the middle of mountains, high, high mountains with snow, and uh, uh, by beautiful lake, to lakes, different lakes. It's quite a nice place. And uh, I'm also uh, uh, an associate researcher in the linguistic uh, laboratory of the new University of Lisbon, where I, where I teach uh, terminology and ontology in French. Oh, it's nice. uh, but I, I, I thought that a lot of among you uh, speak French. Perhaps the French is the next official uh, official language. Well, uh, I'm in charge of the Condillac Research Group. Condillac is a is a French philosopher of the 18th century. He's a quite a famous uh, philosopher, especially when, if you are interested in, uh, in studying the relationships between uh, thought and language. Uh, it, it's a French disciple of John Locke, and he, he wrote quite interesting things about uh, knowledge and human knowledge. For example, he, he said, and he wrote, that because words are the signs of our ideas, the system inherent in natural language must be based on the system inherent in our knowledge. It's very, very important from a knowledge point of knowledge representation point of view, artificial intelligence point of view. But I know that some languages uh, are not uh, really agree with that. Uh, nevertheless, uh, this, um, this uh, research group is an international and multidisciplinary group. Uh, which uh, gathered uh, some uh, researchers coming from Univers Université de Sawa, Universidade Nova de Lisboa, Universidad de Bologna, and uh, some members from different uh, universities in Paris, Sorbonne, one of the most famous, Hidro, Dauphin, and so on. Well, uh, this Condiac Research Group is involved in different European projects, and especially in two. FP7 uh, project. The first one is Lint Heritage. Lint Heritage is, a, I think, it's the biggest European project. Uh, 38 partners, more, more than 20 countries. Very, very big, big project. Uh, perhaps uh, I would say a few words about this, uh, the, this European project because uh, this afternoon, because this project is more or less. Uh, linked with uh, the CR project. And uh, in the linked heritage, we are involved for the University of Sawa, well, in Sierra, it's for the Universidad de Nova de Lisboa. A uh, few words also about the TOT conference. Condiac is in charge of the uh, organization of the TOT uh, conference. It's an international conference in terminology and ontology. Each year, at the beginning of, of June, in ANSI, it's the most beautiful city in France. I don't live in that city, but it's a very beautiful city. Uh, so about this conference, our main goal is to, to bring together people working in, um, in linguistic, uh, uh, linguistics and uh, knowledge representation, and mainly on, in, uh, on terminology and ontology. 
uh, since this year we organize also workshop uh, for during one day more specific because the Thai conference conferences are very general. And so the first one uh, was the, the, the last uh, the last Monday in this one about the definition in terminology. Well, uh, all fields of research uh, it's uh, about terminology and ontology. Uh, I'm going to explain uh, in more in depth what uh, terminology is from the ISO point of view, ISO standard point of view. And uh, we we are working uh, trying to to unify these uh, two different approach uh, and what we call now onto terminology. Well, uh, it, it's not so easy to to prepare uh, such uh, a talk because we don't know exactly what uh, each people uh, knows or not not knows or don't know. Uh, I propose uh, propose you the following con uh, contents. Um, to start uh, about the context, and after that, uh, terminology, ontology, and so on. Um, uh, both are academic projects, research projects, and uh, uh, application uh, projects are, are about industrial context. I, I think it's quite important, especially when you work on ontology and in terminology. Uh, we worked on different applications about nuclear plants, as well as renewable energy. Uh, very interesting also application water dams, uh, always in chemistry. Uh, some of our results uh, uh, have been possi was possible because uh, of these uh, applications. Uh, all these applications um, take into account the information society issues, especially, especially raised by the new IT. How can we manage, for example, the amount, the huge amount of, uh, of information generated by, by IT? Uh, such, uh, so some examples of uh, applications, IT applications. Uh, we work uh, on specialized multilingual, specialized dictionaries, encyclopedias, more exactly, but also on contact management systems and. Uh, uh, semantic search engines and knowledge capitalization, also uh, s subjects which are quite uh, uh, interesting for the CR project. Uh, we can notice that all these application, applications rely on terminology. Uh, when you say rely on terminology, it means that we need to, uh, to operationalize these terminologies. Uh, in fact, to have a computational model of the conceptual system. Uh, just an example of a multi multilingual specialized encyclopedia and encyclopedias is uh, this one. Uh, we can notice uh, the different parts of such encyclopedias uh, where the conceptual dimensions as well as the linguistic di dimension that are well separated. Another example is uh, information retrievals. In this application, I'm going to say a few words about it uh, at the end of this talk. Uh, uh, was realized in the FP6 project, the open project, uh, where the main goal was to, to try to, to query in, in his or her own language in order to find all the relevant information, whatever the language uh, used in the document. Well, uh, let us go back to knowledge sharing issues. Uh, if you are interested in knowledge sh sharing, in, in fact, what do we need is a common language. But if you have to take into account multilingualism, uh, it's uh, necessary to, to distinguish, but also to link the linguistic dimensions and the conceptual dimensions. And as we are going to see it, it's uh, both of these uh, subjects are directly linked to terminology and ontology. But as we are going to see, uh, terminology is not an ontology, and an ontology is not a terminology. So the problem is how can we combine them in a uh, unified approach. Uh, about uh, terminology, uh, I, I don't know if you are uh, if you know the ISO standards. It's um, 
is quite important. Uh, we think it's quite important. Professor Wood Costa and myself are member of uh, ISO technical committees. And uh, it's very interesting for us because in such an approach, uh, it clearly uh, defines these two, two uh, kinds of dimensions in terminology, linguistic in the first hand and conceptual on the other hand. Uh, just a few definitions of ISO standard. I, I, I'm not sure there is some uh, uh, Arab uh, organizations in ISO, I'm not sure. Yes? Okay. okay. But perhaps not in the TC37, uh, uh, which is a principle about principles. We, we can discuss this uh, later. Just to, to, to show you some definitions about uh, uh, what is the term in this uh, standard and what is the concept. Uh, and you can notice that uh, in ISO approach, the, the idea of concept and knowledge is very, very, very important. Uh, the main goal of such standards is, as we can uh, read it, is a, term, a clarification and standardization of concept and terminology for communication between humans, not between uh, computers, between humans. So, to sum up, uh, it's important to, to, to notice that uh, terminology is not specialized in its uh, Terminology is a, is, a, is a scientific domain of research. It's not only a part of linguistics. Uh, it's also important to, to, uh, to notice that terminology is rather prescriptive than uh, a descriptive approach. Uh, we are clearly separated the conceptual and linguistic dimensions. And uh, uh, well, this, last point, this last point is too technical, but uh, we stress on concept and domain knowledge. Well, uh, that's all for terminology. Well, uh, when you, you, you think about concept and domain knowledge, you, you think naturally about ontology. Perhaps everybody knows what an ontology is, but uh, if you don't, uh, you can open your, your dictionary, and for example, Oxford Dictionary, and, and, and read that ontology is a branch of metaphysics dealing with natural being. Well, what is a, uh, the link with my, my purpose? In, in fact, is understanding the world. And uh, su such a preoccupation is also a preoccupation of artificial intelligence, and more exactly, more exactly, knowledge representation. And uh, uh, from this knowledge engineering point of view, uh, it's important to notice that, in fact, everybody speaks ontology. In your daily life, you, you need, in order to, to exchange information, to communicate and so on, you need, uh, you need to, to, uh, to use an ontology. Uh, I'm sure that for, from some experts here, if you go to, for example, to Google to, to find some information about ontology, it can be incredible to see how many web pages we can find can uh, find about, uh, about ontology. And uh, the last time I did it, it was about uh, 28 million of web pages. And even if you are an expert in ontology, it's not so easy to, to find, uh, to find uh, his way. As a matter of fact, uh, what is the relationship between, between WearNet, because WearNet is involved in your project? According to me, WearNet is not an ontology, it's a, it's a semantic network. But uh, some relation between IDA5, between shoes, between RDF schema, which more an interchange for mine, so on and so on. So uh, we need to, to clarify some, some concept. Uh, what we can say is that when you are interested in uh, uh, ontology, uh, it's mainly because we need a common language, especially if you want to, to share knowledge. And, uh, uh, a shared and common understanding of some domain that can be communi communicated across people and computers is today the definition of, of ontology. Well, uh, we can say that from the knowledge uh, representation point of view, knowledge engineering point of view, an ontology is 
mainly to enable such communications. And it's the reason why it's so popular, because you can and you apply ontology in a uh, large domain of research and application. So, an ontology is a specification of a conceptualization, is a famous Google's definition. Why exactly? Uh, a shared description of, of concepts and relationships uh, express in a formal and in general computer readable language. Here are some examples of uh, of uh, ontology, the famous kind of knowledge representation ontology of SOA. Uh, Alex, oh, SOA is here. Uh, Alex is uh, ontology. Uh, uh, it's not very useful, but it is beautiful. It's very pure, very beautiful. And uh, uh, the another example of upper size. Uh, also, some uh, how we can define such ontologies because the diagrams it is not a definition of an ontology using some languages based on first order logic, for example. Here, another example of oh, not uh, difficult to, to read. Well, uh, uh, I'm not sure I have some time to, to present uh, these this slides are perhaps too, too techni technical. Just to, to, um, to bear in mind that uh, when I want to, to read an ontology, I have to, to use a language. And we can distinguish two, two kinds of uh, languages. The first one uh, are logic-based languages. Such languages are very, very useful because we have a clear uh, syntax and semantics. Uh, the definition of concept is, is clearly defined. It's a well-formed formula. Uh, and we can say that logic is necessary. Uh, does it mean that uh, it's, ne it's uh, sufficient? I'm not sure, but it's another problem. Uh, the second more important uh, uh, kind, kind of languages are languages coming from artificial intelligence, the famous frame-based languages. These um, uh, formalisms are interesting because they are quite human readable uh, languages. I know it's quite quick, it's not good, quick, it's okay. But, okay. Ah, ah three, three minutes, okay. So, three minutes. J just to, to finish, uh, I'd like to, uh, 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 to say a few words about how we can, co can combine both ontology and terminologies. Uh, now we can say that uh, everybody agrees on the fact that ontology is very useful uh, for terminology. It's the reason why we have new approaches like term ontography of Rita Temerman or onto terminology. What we can say is that in the last, the last case of onto terminology, uh, when the conceptual system of the terminology is a formal ontology, we have a lot of very useful benefits, especially for a project like Sierra. As a matter of fact, even the conceptual systems is uh, represented as a formal language, you can preserve the linguistic diversity and you can handle quite well multilinguisms. Uh, of course, we have a computation, computational representation and some good properties coming from logic can be uh, also uh, deduced to, uh, to terminology, so quality. Uh, this, just perhaps, not these applications because I have no time, but few words about the FP6 project to, to close my, my talk. Uh, it was a very interesting um, uh, project because the, uh, the goal of this project uh, is quite similar to Sierra. Uh, it was to, to share knowledge about renewable energy between nine European countries. But uh, we, we wanted to, to translate each document, every document, because it was not possible and too expensive is the reason why we have defined, uh, we have with uh, what we call the noto terminology. It means a common ontology representing a, a common understanding of the world and to attach, uh, after that, the different lexi uh, lexicons in French, English, Italian, German, and so on. So, uh, to use it, uh, for example, in the Aztec uh, website, if you choose um, your ontology in French, in this form, for example, 
I am looking for, well, it's not very, very, very easy to, to see it. Uh, for example, I'm looking for some information about capture solar, and you can find all the relevant documents about capture solar, uh, whatever the language, and the first document is written in, in, English, in English, when the second one is written in Italian. Uh, we have, of course, some information of how the document is classified and, uh, find, and found out. Uh, and, of course, the information are given in your own language. Uh, you, can, uh, 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 you can have access to some useful information. Uh, of course, you can directly uh, see the documents. Here is in Italian, if you can, even if you can read it. And, uh, of course, uh, some useful information in natural language uh, query. Uh, some also, what we think is quite important is um, knowledge mapping, as a matter of fact, when you have a, a knowledge base, it's quite important also to, to both uh, inside your knowledge base, using more knowledge and perhaps linguistic uh, aspects. Uh, and so on and so on. Of course, met meta language, uh, meta search engine, which can, can be useful. Uh, because we have less notes and, of course, more results. Just to, to conclude, last, the last slide. So, uh, multilingual knowledge sharing uh, need to, to take into account uh, the two dimensions, linguistic and conceptual. And uh, it's also a multidisciplinary approach. It means that we need knowledge engineers as well as linguistic engineers. And nevertheless, of course, there are a lot of uh, issues which, uh, which remain, uh, especially about some resources to, to be built, for example, Arabic WorldNet, but also some theoretical aspects like ontology alignment, as well as some application using the two portals, Michael and Kyoto. Thank you very much. Uh, we have room for two or three questions. Somebody want to ask? It's your name and your uh, Thank you very much for your presentation. My name is Mohamed Mari. I am a PhD student uh, from Monash University, Australia. Uh, my question is related to the verbal queries. You said that uh, a user can submit a natural language query to the system, to the semantic search engine, right? So, how do you handle verbal queries when the query is too long and not all concepts exist in the ontology, no matter whether it is in English or French or any other language. Yes. Uh, if though that such an approach relies on the fact that uh, your query uh, m m much, uh, m must uh, denote uh, all the necessary concepts. Uh, a query is only uh, treated as another document. In fact, each document and query uh, are, um, are processed in order to extract, to find out which is the different concept. And after that, we align the, the different uh, set of concepts. But of course, we need to, to know the, all the different concepts, both in the documents and in the query. Other questions? My name is Ahmed Hamo. I'm working uh, in the Institute of Law. Uh, we are working with the legal information system. Uh, my question is, uh, which advantages brings an ontology in, compared with a thesaurus in the information they provide? Yes. Uh, okay. There is no another microphone. Mm. Very good and interesting questions. Linked heritage, for example, is a um, uh, FP7, a European project about multilingual thesaurus alignment. Uh, a thesaurus is not, according to me, an ontology, it's more a controlled vocabulary. Uh, uh, if you know scores, for example, I, I think it's a, uh, a good, uh, good means to, to translate an ontology uh, in, for thesaurus. Um, uh, thesaurus uh, highlight uh, some descriptors, some keywords, when uh, uh, ontology uh, stress on concepts, rather than words to speak about the concepts. But I think we need both. The reason why it's, it's very interesting to, to combine them. Uh, for example, more and more people working on 
and theory are interesting in how can I represent more concept. Keep, keep in mind that I am also to attach to these concepts different descriptors or preferred labels and so on. How much is it in masses and masses? Usually, uh, ontologies are very much related with reasoners. Uh, so, uh, for multilingual uh, ontology, uh, such as uh, what you are building, what kind of reasoner can you uh, to handle the queries? Thank you. I thought that uh, when you work on ontology, you are interested in reasoners too, in order to reason on your concept. Uh, uh, for multilingual, in fact, I, 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 I don't know. I have to say I don't know. Uh, uh, because he thought that the, our model is quite simple. We can say in few words that, in fact, what you do is only to attach some words directly to concepts. So it's, it's quite a simple, simple way of, of, of thinking. Uh, I, I think because I have no more time, it's not necessary also to, to distinguish the lang linguistic dimension. For example, we can say that a term uh, is used in the text, like any word. So, as it used in the text, like any word, it has a signified from social point of view, from social point of view. And the signified is not a concept. So, we have to work more on signified. And uh, can we deduce some useful information about how signified are put into relationships using the relationship between concepts? I think it can be a very interesting uh, domain of research. So let us take the last question, but it means that you can continue your questions during the breaks and the lunch. Uh, Andre from GSO. Uh, I have a question about emotions. I mean, uh, words have emotions tied to them, and the same word could mean many different things based on the emotional state. I'm wondering in ontology how you deal, how do you deal with that, or the combination of words or the emotions behind them? If I well understood, emotion or sense, emotion. Uh, I think that I'm a scientist, so scientific people have no emotion. It, it's not true, but from a scientific point of view, um, for example, in uh, the epistemological theory of knowledge from a physical point of view, we have a philosopher here. Who is it? Paul? Where are you? Ah, here. Uh, in theory of knowledge, uh, we think that we're interested of what the concept is, but not taking into account emotion and like some, some, uh, uh, some subject because it's too difficult and uh, you know uh, logic and emotions. And, uh, <laughs> yes, that we can go to the, together. Okay, thank you, Christophe, for your presentation. Please allow me, it's actually time of my presentation to go quickly. Uh, I will uh, give uh, uh, a general uh, overview about the Arabic ontology project that we are carrying on here at BZ University. So first, I would like to acknowledge the, uh, the work of my team because this is actually, a lot of people are contributing to, to this uh, project. And we have uh, new people that recently joined us, like uh, Dr. Basim. Yeah. Ah. So, and, uh, 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 Jamal Zahir from the Department of Philosophy, also Professor Mahdi Arar is starting with us, and we have also uh, even uh, bachelor uh, students who are doing their projects in, the, uh, in this topic. Uh, quickly, I will very, very quickly, even by demonstrations, give ooh, I mean indication what is really. Uh, an ontology. So this, if you see here in this diagram, we say, okay, we can use ontologies for semantic mediation or for interoperability. For example, we have ministry, one will want to talk with the ministry and what they want to send, like uh, through a web service, for example, a data message, 
And uh, well, in this communication, as you see, there should be, you know, the data message, for example, it can be an XML. How to know that, well, if name, if there is like if name in the XML tag, an XML tag that need to be sent between two ministries, what does it mean? It's simple nowadays because if there are, if we have only two ministries or three ministries, maybe they are even in the same uh, uh, area, they call each other, even sometimes the programmers are friends to each other. Ah, they ask each other, what does it mean if they? So then you don't need ontology, you don't need anything, if this is the case. But if we have a lot of organizations, like, well, at least in Palestine we have 23 ministries, 55 uh, uh, governmental bodies and so on, so you need really a framework to define everything. In this case, what what needs to be done is actually, even we have XML and these data models, even we have XML scheme or whatever, you need to de formally define all the meanings, so it's the naming of the things, the meaning of the things, the data structure of the things you need to exchange, it has to be defined, this is actually what's what is ontology? Another thing here, like you have in semantic mediation, you have different, for example, in e-commerce, different uh, uh, stores, online stores. Again, the you know when you buy from Amazon, you know like maybe tens of companies are actually involved in your transaction. Someone for the payment, someone for the shipping, the printing, and so on. All of these communications also between the companies, they need also a semantic framework where also they need kind of ontologies to, to agree. Another example, suppose you want to say, okay, find a developer position, maximum 10 minutes from Ramallah. Somebody's looking for a job, asking who. Well, what can be the result? The result is like this. This is real, no, nothing really related to your equipment. So, I would say the search engines, this, as they use string matching, is actually reaching their limits. This is the maximum they can do, but such queries cannot be answered. Hmm? So the semantic web widget is to do another thing. Is to say, okay, this is a web page, inside the web page we embed some semantic data. Huh? Inside the HTML, the user does not see anything. And this data, the, the, the embedded semantics, have to, the definitions have to come from the own code. So it's kind of annotating the text somehow using RDF. And in this case, Google will know also the meanings of the things and will be better served. Uh, there are unlimited number of applications used to use ontologies. Also in machine translation. In this case, for uh, multilingual ontologies, uh, automatic text analysis, artificial intelligence applications in, gen in general, including also world sense disambiguation, information retrieval, text classification, summarization. Even you can use ontologies offline. We don't need sometimes computers to use ontologies. You can use ontology as a conceptual dictionary, as I will show you. In general, there is, I would say, in our era, there is a huge demand for not only sharing the data, but also its semantics, because we have now globalization. I would like to quote Garner, the research magazine, on their emphasis in 2002 to this issue, actually. That is blocking business, I would say, e-commerce and international business. Now, short background, they say, what does it mean, lexical semantics? So by the way, there are two types of ontologies, I would classify them. One called application ontology and one called language ontology. So I would say here, when we say WebNet, okay, there were a lot of maybe problems with WebNet, we will explain what is WebNet. But it can be seen as a language ontology, not really an application ontology. So let's say, okay, what is the meaning of the meaning? What does it mean, the mean? <laughs> well, to understand how actually we think, this is a simplified version, by the way, of, of lexical semantics. So we have the mean triangle. 
So if we have a wear called table, ah, table, it, it's either a voice, even with emotions. You know. So or table, it's written in T A B L E whatever. Now, but where is the table? Is it the wear? Is it this one? Yes, well, there is a wear, which is called the symbol. But also, the thing, it is this one. But this is an instance of a table. But the meaning of a table, it's actually only in Hore. So, table means that, so in our head, there's some kind of characteristics to distinguish things in reality. So we have set of characteristics. Ah, we call this as a table. We don't call this as a table. Maybe we call this as a table. Ah, uh, whatever. So we have set of characteristics in our mind to distinguish things in reality. And we group these characteristics and we give a name. English-speaking people call it table. In Arabic, for example, tower. Hmm? Well, we can also use the same way to refer to another concept. So, this is the concept. To table means, ah, uh, oh, sorry. It can mean table as a furniture or the table as a data structure. Hmm? Now, referring, let's say, say, this is called a symbol. Maybe it's a voice. And the thing itself, the instance, is actually this one, while the concept or the meaning is in our head. So the meaning is a set of characteristics in our mind to distinguish things in reality. So this is, what does it mean, concept? In other words, so this is the concept, again. This is the instance itself. In Arabic, which one instance? Hal. No. It's difficult to find the word in Arabic for instance. But there is a word in the literature. It's called al-masadak. Al-Masadak. It's one word. Al-Masadak, you know, you have set of instances in your head. So everything satisfying these characteristics is called Masadak Ahadi Sifa. So it's called Al-Masadak. The instance means Al-Masadak. So now, so the meaning, the word meaning, our ma'ana, it's the same when we say concept our mafu. Is this, it's all the same, refer to the same thing. A term may refer to different concepts. Term may refer to different concepts. Now, so a concept might not be agreed among all people. Because the set of characteristics in my head is not exactly the same set of characteristics in your head. But the more we interact with each other, the, we like, the, the gap will be closer. So it means that we share more concepts. You know, when I say something, you understand it because we build like 90, 99%, let's say, we share exactly the same set of rules. So when we say university, school, uh, table, chair, whatever, we actually, the more interactions we have, we, the more we agreements we have about the concepts. Uh, and, uh, for example, if you want to see it better, uh, uh, you know, we have exactly the same words with the people in Maru, but they have different meanings, huh? sometimes. Uh, you know, uh, they call Fundok Nusul, which is right, but, you know, they have different meanings. Also the concept, I mean, the words and the concept. So, uh, so people might, might not agree on exactly the same set of rules or probabilities, Thus, most common probabilities are usually used. Which means a community of practice, so, I mean, used within a community of practice. You know, mechanics in a country, sometimes they have their own terminology. I mean, the, the other society, they don't know about it. Uh, okay. Concepts are not totally language and development. So, what does it mean? It means that here at this, Side, it's not like we take word from English and we put the word in Arabic. We have the same concepts exactly. So it's not always the case. And here, for example, the word table in English, we, 
There is Jadwal in Arabic here, but there is another word called Tawli to refer to, to these two different concepts, two different meanings of the word Tawli. Is it clear? Now, I would say languages are just like this. There is a lot of shared concepts also. Between Arabic, if you see Arabic, English, and French, there is a common, maybe an area where it's very much like the concepts are shared. You know? We don't know it of these words. Or I guess they are the most common words that we, the, the three communities, talk all the time. Yeah? So they are, you know, they build the set of shared concepts. But there are also concepts in Arabic. I'm talking about concepts, not words. Huh? Concepts. But there are also concepts that between Arabic and the French that they are actually this area, that they are these concepts that don't exist in French. And so, so what is the Arabic? This is a, a, a short background about lexical semantics. What is the Arabic ontology project? So it's a project that we started at Rizal University. Some people compare it with, the, uh, with the, they call it an Arabic web day. It's fine, we, are, we don't have a problem with this. But it's more. It's more that, what is the difference? Is that we very much focus on the linguistic, the logical and philosophical foundations of the ontology. This is why we call it really ontology, as you will see now. By the, by the way, I would like to acknowledge that the seed money for this project is funded from the uh, Office of the Academic uh, Affairs and the, uh, the, uh, the Research Committee in the University. Yes. So, this is an example. I know it's in Arabic, so you will not get it, but it's simple to explain. So, we have a word. Hmm? You have another word. You have another word. A word may have different meanings. So, this is where thought it has two meanings, like raw in English, you know. So, but in Arabic it has two different meanings. The word jadwa, it has three different meanings. The word nahir, it has three different meanings. Masfuki has one meaning. Suppose we call it all Arabic words, okay? And we bring or we specify the set of distinct meanings of each word. And then we give a number. Not to the word, so forget the words. Even you can delete the, delete the words now. Only the concepts. This is, this is the concept. Saf means مجموعة من التلاميذ في مستوى تعليم واحد أو Saf means ترتيب لأشياء تكون فيه مستوية جنبا إلى جنب. جدول مصفوفة بيانات مكونة من صفوف وأعمدي it may also mean Nahir Sabir, or, because it's not a shame, it's called Rattab al-Ashya'a ala shakwi, ala shakwi jadwal means jadwi. So, suppose you even, you can delete, suppose, you can delete even the, the words. So we, now you have the constants. What, this is not yet the ontology. Okay? What is really now, what we are going to do is to put semantic relationships between these concepts. So, this bar means subtype of, or it means gens men. Hmm? So then, jadwal, it's a subtype of masfufi, or, sorry, uh, I, I made a mistake. It's not jadwal, it's subtype of masfufi. It's this concept of jadwal, or this meaning of jadwal, it's sub subtype of this meaning of masfufi. And this meaning of masfufi is subtype of this meaning of terpi and so on. Now, this, if you build it for all concepts, or for all the meanings of the Arabic words, you end up with a tree or a graph. Hmm? This is called the ontology. But not only, you can have not only the subtype relation, but kind of other relations like bar of, or sometimes you can have instance of, okay? And including other values. So we deal with the, we, we give number to the concepts, we deal with the polysomy and synonymy of the words. So you know, uh, synonymy means that two words 
referring exactly to the, to the same, the, to one of the concepts. Velocity hmm? means that where they have different meanings. Okay. Now, this is called lexical unit. This is the concept ID. And this is a gloss. And we are, by the way, we are a core component in our methodology is the notion of the gloss, which is, okay, it, 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 it's, it, it, uh, uh, there is a gloss, the notion of the gloss in WebD, but actually we have different notions of the gloss. So a gloss is not just a description, as I will still show you later. Not, so there is a, like strict or it's control, you know. And we have semantic relations, as I said. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean, semantic relation? Is a relationship between two concepts, <coughs> not words, like subtype of, but of, etc. And lexical relations, there might be a lexical relation, like synonym of, root of, abbreviation of, but they are not that important or, or the focus of, the, of our ontology. So, ontologies mainly are, are mainly concerned with the semantic relations, not the lexical relations. Lexical relation means relation between words. But, you know, relation between words, this is something linguistic, you know? And but when you say ontology, it's you only refer to semantic things. So the focus is the semantic relationships. Now, quickly, uh, so, the, the, sorry, now, the Arabic ontology is the set of concepts of all Arabic terms, and the semantic, not the lexical, Relations, relationships between those concepts. To build, I will show you how we are building, uh, later I will show you how we are building the relations. Okay, very quickly, I would say, what does it mean subtype of? It's not a general, like in where it means, a, a more specific, more general relation, or it's not a, a economy in where it it's a, it's a mathematical relation means subset of. For example, if you, if you have here the wall, and these are instances hmm, of, uh, let's say, for example, uh, concept number 14, which is, which is Tanzim al Ashaq Surah Manhaji. So, things are arranged. I mean, this word in English, let's say, this is arrangement. That's by, there is, certain arrangement. So when we say, ah, there is a tertip here, there is a tertip there, there is a tertip there. These are instances of the concept tertip, right? So, I mean, when you look at your house, you say, ah, had tertip in me, had a tertip mission me. So you are, this, so hal hali is an instance of the concept tertip. And if you have this, you say, Everything in the wall that you refer to as a tertip, so these are the instances inside this concept. Now this circle is called the set of tertip, or the set of instances of tertip. Now, uh, some of these instances, you some of these instances you call masfuf, which means it has to be arranged, but close right to each other. So, in Arabic, tertib ashia jamban ila jam. You know, some of these uh, 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 situations, and I'm going to talk about Arabic, some of these situations that you call it tertib, some of them you call it what? It's not true. 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 So, some of these situations, from the tertib, we call it what? It's not true. So, it's a subset of. And you can go on, hmm? like for example, the uh, agenda is the three or four subset of the agenda, and the agenda is the subset of the masfufi, and the masfufi is subset of So it's a mathematical relation between the concepts. This is exactly what we mean with subtype relation. And a little more, so, or to have, there is inheritance here. Uh, for people who know uh, uh, some. So, hyponomy and wordnet, there is 
as an elegy in Wordit. So Wordit, by the way, is something very similar, but in English. That is built by Princeton University, where actually uh, uh, Professor uh, Christiana Finbom will be talking online uh, today. So she is giving us presentation about Wordit. And uh, so, it, there is a re similar relation called Hobonui in Wordnet, which is very, very close to our uh, uh, subtype relation. But, but Hobonui is actually linguistically, it's actually ambiguous relation. It's not a sub exactly subset relation. Right? There is in Tizoros, and referred to the Ahmed's question, Tizoros. Tizoros is, there is something similar, but it's called more general, more specific word. Well, in this case, you can say there is a desert and there is a camel. They are close to each other. But, or someone who there is actually subtitle of the other one, but it's completely wrong. So I would, I would say that Tizoros is something that is built by people who are not really they be aggressive and say they don't know what they are doing. They are not precise. The thesaurus is not really precise. Now, here we try to do very precise things. There is, I will skip this, well, also grouper subtypes. So it's not only subtypes. We also focus that the subtype relation has to be grouper subtype. I would like also to talk uh, a bit about our, about our upper level ontology that we build. So I would say it's not. Okay, there is a Somo and uh, Dochi and uh, John Sowa's uh, Upper Living Ontology. So this is not an ontology for the whole world. That, those ontologies is for everything. Our ontology, this one, is not a very general one. It's only for Arabic language, which means it's the first top levels in the ontology. Imagine C3 is just the first top level. And this is very, very, very critical and dangerous component because it governs the correctness of everything done. So we have to build it very carefully. And this is a multidisciplinary work that Rana Rashmawi, master student, is also helping me on building this ontology. So we build it. Uh, we are close to finish this work. It's about 550 uh, concepts. It, it actually it tops all of it. So Everything is done, it's, it's connected to the tilt level. I'm showing how only three levels for simplicity. Uh, uh, quickly, uh, the gloss. We are very uh, uh, strict with what is written in the gloss. It has to start, must, it must start with the super type of the definition. You see, I've done a search engine. So it's a computer program that, an invoice, a business document that, university and institution of. It must start with the super type. And then you, then you actually uh, focus on the distinguishing characteristics and intrinsic properties. You say, for example, ah, uh, uh, a computer laptop, for example, a portable computer, and then you say, small enough to use in yeah, etc. Means we only put the intrinsic properties. And it has to be edited in forms of propositions, so and so on. So actually, it's kind of very controlled. I will not call it formal, but it's uh, actually this is the most difficult part of our work is actually to to render or to to, write, to uh, articulate the intrinsic properties of the concept being defined. Uh, let's skip something. So uh, our difference between the difference between our Arabic ontology and where it is that. We focus on intrinsic properties, so it's a philosophically well founded. All types are rigid. If somebody is familiar with what is rigid, this is the reserve work in, in the ontology engineering community. But there is a top level, so it's not like where, they, where after they build it, they come and they uh, plug in uh, the SOM ontology. No, we build our top level ontology from the beginning and we start going down. Uh, strictly formal uh, relations, semantic relations, and strictly controlled glosses. Uh, uh, what we did actually, I'm finish, closing to, to finish, uh, we call it, we went to, to build this, 
So we need concepts. We went to dictionaries. We tried to mine, you know, some of the of the dictionaries where it's like the word and there's a gloss. We start mining a lots and lots of, 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 of dictionaries. So we have now about 75 glosses or 75 concepts. Actually, we have we started a, 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 an initiative with the students. We have about 100, uh, 100 uh, students are typing dictionaries, uh, but not any dictionary. So this is the uh, announcement where we need students and they will really give them some hours to, to start collecting. But not all dictionaries are relevant. So they are, this is an Arabic. Not all dictionaries are relevant. Most dictionaries are irrelevant for our work. So we went to all libraries to search which are the most interesting dictionaries to start mining the glosses. So we mine the gloss, sorry. So <clears throat> what we do, okay, we find concepts. So if you, if you go to dictionary and you have where and its definition, so it means that actually this is a concept, this is a concept, this is a concept. Well, but this is not the point. How can we know that this concept is subtype of this concept? You know, we are not doing anything manual, more or less. Most of our work is automatic, so we want to build this ontology completely automatic, <coughs> hoping or as as automated as possible. So in order to look now to find subtype relation between this, our idea is okay. Can we find that this concept in Arabic is equivalent to this concept in English? Automatically. Well, if you find this, what can you do? If a concept in Arabic, so it's called A, is actually equivalent to the a concept in word name called B, and a concept in, in Arabic called C, equivalent to a concept in English called D. And there is a subtype relation between B and B. Now we can reason and find that there is also a relation like this. But we can do this, but then we need a very, very uh, 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 special matching function. So we have to do this, this, this one. This one has to be done automatically with a very high accuracy. And you know, this is like a gloss written in Arabic and not good equality sometimes. And this is a, a very short gloss written in English. And we have to, 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 to build a smart algorithm to find this one. So we did it until now with 90% accuracy. But we are also do, using your language for Muhammad Mirhan, since he's not here. So we are using uh, even some techniques from neural networks to improve it. So I hope we will reach 99% at the end of, of the year, I hope. Uh, so this, this, this magic. Uh, and after we do this, this is done automatically. So we have this concept, we map it manually to our top level ontology. Well, as you know, when we find this mapping, it's not necessarily true. It's not necessarily true because if it, even this is even if it's true. By the way, this is English and this is Arabic. So I would call it. This is just only a good start. Only a good start. So what we do to in order to correct this also automatically, we map it to our top level ontology automatic. This is done manually. And from the previous step, we know, we find this, that J is subtype of A and H subtype of C. So the black one is done automatically, and we want actually to verify if this is correct or not. Because this is done manually, now we can say, ah, if this is, it looks true, and we can now delete this link, because it's actually in black. Hmm? We can delete this link. However, this mapping seems not correct with what we found automatically because it has two far away super types. So we delete this one and so on. Uh, let me just finish the last slide. So we are doing, we are building our ontology like this. 
Even we started the new thing to further collaborate, I would say, given an Arabic English dictionary. We are working with uh, Dr. Basin Serat on this uh, research program. So, given an Arabic English dictionary, can we derive an Arabic Arabic dictionary? Or given an English French dictionary, can we automatically derive a French French dictionary or thesaurus? Well, quickly you can do something, in five minutes you can build it, but it has a lot of wrong things. And the challenge is, is actually to eliminate the wrong things.